Are you looking for a new powerhead for your saltwater aquarium that is going to give you the ultimate control in flow and random water movement? Then this video is perfect for you. Hi, I'm Richard from the Beginners Reef and I'm here to help you succeed with your saltwater aquarium by providing you with great information, awesome resources and really helpful tips. If you're new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button and anything I mention in this video, you can find in the video notes below. Make sure you stick around to the end because I've got a great beginner's tip that I hope you'll find really helpful. So this video is all about variable flow power heads for your saltwater aquarium. And this video is part of a power head series that we have created to try and help you decide on what kind of power head you need for your aquarium. So variable flow power heads are now the staple in saltwater aquariums. Over the last 10 years, they've really come on leaps and bounds and the technology's got so much better that they've just made it more affordable for everybody. Um, so they kind of started off as a fixed flow power head. Like if you've just seen our other video uh, on the fixed flow power heads, those you just plug into the wall and they just run. But with the advent of kind of the DC motor and control being put into aquariums, you can now control how that pump works and it offers so much flexibility for your aquarium. But because of that, they are more expensive than the fixed flow pump. But because now we've had this kind of explosion in innovation, there's so many pumps to pick from, from many, many different manufacturers with really good, solid reputations for building awesome equipment for saltwater aquariums. So the variable flow pumps are, you can find many that will fit your aquarium. Now the variable flow pumps generally provide a, a wide stream of rotational flow of water. Um, the gyro pumps, which are in one of our other videos, are more like water moving over a waterfall, whereas the variable flow and fixed flow pumps are like a flow of water coming out the hose pipe from a fireman. So these ones are good because they can provide direct streams of water but it comes out and it flows out. It's like a wide stream. Um, so because of that, they can move a lot of volume of water. And with the control, it gives you the ultimate flexibility of what you wanna do with that volume of water. The other cool thing about these pumps is because they can be controlled, you can link them up with the included controllers or you can link them to aquarium controllers and create arrays of pumps to work kind of as a team. So you can have them working together on and off like a master and a slave. You can have one just pulsing like this and one being solid. You know, there's, again, it's, it's all about the flexibility they offer you as an aquarist. So the variable flow pumps are, yeah, pretty much everybody's favorite nowadays. There's so many options for every size aquarium, whether you are down at a tiny, 15, 20 gallon nano aquarium, these awesome pumps like these little Akamai variable flow power heads, you can get them and they just work great for nano aquariums. So you can get pumps down to about 350 gallons per hour and then you can go all the way up to the other end of the spectrum where the things like the Ecotech Vortec MP60 range, they can be moving over 7,500 gallons per hour um, at their full max speed and that's a serious amount of water. So you can find every kind of flow rate you desire for your size aquarium. Now they are more expensive than the fixed flow pump because you have that controllability. But for the small pumps like that little Akamai, they start down around about the $100 range for a power head and an included controller. Um, and they just, they go up. <laughs> you can be up to six, seven, 800 bucks for the MP60 from Ecotech, but there's everything in between. So you've got such a vast options to pick from, which makes it really, really good. The main thing that's really cool with these is that just like the gyro pumps, um, you can run them on their own controllers or you can buy little interface modules and link them up to aquarium controllers like the Neptune Apex or the GHL Profilux and you can then just run your whole aquarium from one app on your phone. And it's awesome. The flexibility they provide you, 
it's awesome, but you're gonna pay a little bit more for it. So if you're wondering how to size the pump to your aquarium, if you've watched any of our other videos, you can skip this bit. Uh, but if you're new to this video or this video series, you basically want to size your pump correctly because if you get a pump that is too big for your aquarium, you're basically just going to blow your sand everywhere, you're going to tear the flesh off your corals, you're going to stress your fish because the flow is going to be too strong for them to swim against. So the way that we look at this is your livestock is the first kind of thing that you need to look at when sizing your pump. So if you're going to have a fish only aquarium, you want to be turning over the volume of the aquarium between five to ten times per hour. So if you've got a 50 gallon aquarium, you basically times that volume by 10. 50 times 10 is going to give you 500 gallons per hour. If you're going to be having corals like softies and LPS, so mushrooms, frog spawn, hammers, zoas, things like that, you want to be turning your aquarium over anywhere from 10 to 20 times. So 100 gallon aquarium times 20, you're going to be up at 2,000 gallons per hour. Now, if you want to go into SPS corals, especially in the future, then you want to be turning over your volume of your aquarium anywhere from between 20 to 40, 50, 60 plus. Um, so SPS require the most amount of flow. So if you're going to buy a pump, I recommend you buy one that's going to last you well into the future. So if you want a little bit more details on how to calculate turnover, uh, just stick around to the end because I've got a link to our comparison video that talks a lot more detail about turning over for your aquarium. But the main thing you want to remember here is size your pump to your aquarium. Pick which livestock you're going to have in there, look at the size of your aquarium, then go over to somewhere like Marine Depot, which you can find the link below. Look at the power heads and each one that you are looking at will have in the details in the description a recommended aquarium size. So if you want a pump that's around about a thousand gallons per hour and you are in a 50 gallon aquarium, go find a pump that starts off around about the thousand gallons per hour. Check what recommended size it is and you'll be good to go. So as these variable flow pumps have evolved over the last decade, the science and research behind the kind of flow that they can create has really come on leaps and bounds. And because of that, some really cool flow patterns have been developed and are now have kind of been adopted by all the manufacturers. And because there's so many different types of flow patterns now, you can pick a flow pattern so easily on the controller that's going to suit your aquarium. So you can have things like lagoon mode, swell mode, gyro mode, um, feeding mode where it basically you press it the button and it stops all the pumps for 10 minutes whilst you feed and then it fires them all back up automatically. Or the other cool one is nutrient export mode which a lot of people use at night which is designed to get all the junk from hiding in holes and cracks in the uh, live rock into the water and then fired into your overflow so your filtration can remove it. Some of them have got the battery backup mode, so the Ecotech Vortec pumps, you can purchase a battery backup system and they automatically detect that there's a power failure and they run down to an optimized um, battery mode. So they will run for as long as they can on the battery power. So that's awesome to protect in your aquarium against a power outage. Um, many of the controllers that come with the pumps now are Wi-Fi based. They have smartphone apps, uh, Bluetooth, you name it. You can be sitting there on your couch and you can be playing with your pumps. The other cool thing is that because they're all DC controlled, they can be linked to the popular aquarium controllers like the Neptune Apex or the GHL Profilux. Some can link directly, some you might just need a little add-on module but it gives you the ultimate flexibility on how you control the flow in your aquarium. So kind of just like the gyro pumps, there's so many pros compared to the cons of these pumps. The multiple sizes allows you to find a flow rate and a pump size to match your aquarium and your livestock. Um, good pedigree from the manufacturers, well proven history, and most of these pumps are into their multiple generation of evolution now so a lot of the bugs have been ironed out most of them will run fairly quietly some of them you can have a bit of a, a ramp up and ramp down noise 
um, which may be an issue if you're going to be having your aquarium say in your dorm room or in your bedroom you might want to turn your pumps down to like a more of a constant flow mode at night otherwise you've not got a pump going five feet from your head uh, whilst you're trying to sleep um, but again there's just so much flexibility with them and really those cons are just the they can have a bit of a noise with the ramp up and ramp down but the other main con is they are expensive and uh, the small ones like i said you can start from about 100 bucks but you're going to be looking at two three four five hundred dollars easily for a good quality larger flow rate controllable variable pump um, but they're good pedigree you pay that money and pretty much it's going to be lasting you a long time they are really really good pumps so the variable flow pump is basically the go-to pump for a saltwater coral reef aquarium random chaotic flow is what we need to help corals thrive and by using variable flow pumps you get the ultimate control now you can run multiple types of pumps in an aquarium you can have fixed flows you can have gyros you can have variable flow pumps um, the more movement of water you get in random directions and at random speeds the more chaotic the flow and that's going to provide awesome conditions for your corals to thrive in keep your detritus in suspension and it's going to aid in agitating the water surface for gas exchange to get rid of nitrogen carbon dioxide and bring oxygen into the water so your variable flow pumps are pretty much the standard pump that you really want to look at if this is going to be one of your first purchases for a powerhead. So the beginner's tip for this video is if you're new to powerheads, especially these variable flow powerheads, um, you have to be really careful with the shafts that the impellers sit on. They're usually either a ceramic material or like a stainless steel or titanium because they have to take a lot more wear from the ramping up and ramping down of the impellers. Now the ceramic ones you've got to be really, really careful with, especially when you're reassembling the power head after you've taken it apart for cleaning. Um, I've almost snapped a ceramic shaft and it was so easily done because I hadn't quite lined the shaft up into the little indent in the cap and I went to put it in and I just caught it at the last minute before I just give it a good shove. Um, so be careful because if you break one, most of the manufacturers will either charge you for a new impeller or some of them you can just buy the shafts um, but it can be an expensive mistake you know if you have to buy a new impeller you could be looking at a hundred bucks um, so just be really careful when you're reassembling that pump back in just make sure you kind of gently fit everything back together and if it doesn't feel like it's compressing properly take it out and make sure everything seats properly because I can guarantee if you snap a ceramic shaft after watching this video your brain will come straight back to it and you'll be like oh, Richard told me so be careful when you're reassembling your pumps especially the ones that have ceramic shafts so the variable flow pumps are just awesome awesome pumps and if you want to try and figure out which power head might be the best for your aquarium make sure you check out this video here where I kind of go over all the power heads all the different types sizes compare them kind of side by side so by the time you've watched that video you'll know exactly the kind of power head that you want for your saltwater aquarium I'll see you next time